History always repeats itself, but we can never return to the past. You don't seem to understand that fools who don't respect the past are doomed to repeat it. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be tackling the ever-talented archaeologist of the Straw Hat crew, Nico Robin. Nico Robin is a uniquely talented member of the Straw Hat Pirates whose dream is to find and decipher the Rio Poneglyph, a series of giant stone cubes that are said to contain the true history of the world. She was born on the island of Ohara into a family of archaeologists. Sadly, that family all but abandoned her at the age of two, as Robin's mother, Nico Olvia, set out to sea in order to study the Poneglyphs scattered throughout the world, and her father is presumed to have passed away prior to this. Robin was instead left to her uncle and his wife, and she proceeded to grow up in a verbally and physically abusive environment where she was expected to keep out of sight, also known as Harry Potter Syndrome. With that said, Robin did have one safe haven which was the Tree of Knowledge, an incredibly comprehensive library that served as the crowning feature of Ohara. Robin became friends with the director of the library, Professor Clover, as well as the other scholars who frequently came to use its resources. At some stage during her childhood, Robin also consumed a devil fruit known as the Hanahananomi. This is a paramecia type fruit that gives its user the ability to sprout body parts onto just about any surface. Although this really did not help Robin's social situation, with most children her age now absolutely terrified that she was some sort of monster. And so Robin spent most of her time reading, eagerly engulfing knowledge, and at the mere age of eight, she became an official scholar of Ohara. By this time, Robin had also discovered that the scholars were conducting secret research on the true history of the world, and announced her intention to follow in her mother's footsteps. At which point, Professor Clover, in an attempt to protect Robin from stepping into that particularly dangerous world, threatened her with a ban from the library if she pursued this matter further. A very distraught Robin then ran off and discovered a most unusual sight on the beaches of Ohara, as a giant by the name of Jaguar D. Saul had washed ashore. The two formed a strong bond, and Robin visited Saul frequently over the next four days as he built an escape raft. Saul was unlike anyone Robin had ever met before, and not simply because he was a giant, but because he was able to empathize with her pain and taught her the coping mechanism of laughing when times got especially difficult. However, things took a sudden turn for the worse when Saul was informed that he had washed up on the island of Ohara, and he immediately warned Robin that the Marines were on their way to destroy the island due to the illegal research being conducted by the scholars. Robin would then go on to witness the murder of Professor Clover at the hands of CP9, a secret cell of world government operatives. At this point, Robin's mother, Olvia, had also made it back to Ohara, and after a very brief reunion with Robin, Olvia entrusted her to Saul, who turned out to be an ex-Marine Vice Admiral who had helped Olvia escape prison. Despite Saul's best efforts, he was eventually defeated by Vice Admiral Kuzan, who would go on to become Marine Admiral Aokiji, and his final words were used to encourage Robin to escape and search the ocean for Nakama of her own, as well as to laugh when times got hard. Robin then made her way to the raft Saul built, only to be met by Kuzan, who, in a stunning change of heart, decided to let her her live due to respect for his old colleague Saul. However, Kuzan did warn her that he would be the first one to track Robin down should she cause any trouble in the future. Robin then sailed away from Ohara as it was completely obliterated and became the sole survivor of her people. Sadly, the fact that Robin was alive did not escape the world government for long, and a bounty of 79 million berries was issued on her head, as well as the epithet of Demon of Ohara, actively spreading propaganda that the scholars of the island were researching the ancient weapons in an attempt to destroy the world. And so Robin spent most of the next two decades of her life on the run, being consistently betrayed by those she met, until at the age of 24 she joined Baroque Works, an organization led by then Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocodile, who had hired Robin for her ability to read the ancient language. Robin adopted the alias of Miss All Sunday, and would first officially appear in the series during the Whiskey Peacock. Robin spent her time with the organization frequently undermining Crocodile by doing things such as allowing Princess Vivi to learn his true identity, and by saving Monkey D. Luffy after what should have been a fatal encounter with the Warlord. In the end, Robin was simply using Crocodile to gain access to the Poneglyph hidden in Alabaster, which contained information on the ancient weapon Pluton, but it was not one of the Rio Poneglyphs that Robin was looking for. Crocodile then betrayed Robin before she could attempt to assassinate him. Following Crocodile's defeat, it was Robin who provided Luffy with the antidote to Crocodile's poison, and she would be carried against her will out of a rapidly collapsing alabaster tomb by the Straw Hat Captain. As a result, immediately after the alabaster arc, Robin appeared on the Going Merry and requested to join the Straw Hats in order for Luffy to take responsibility for the life he forcibly bestowed upon her. Luffy agreed surprisingly easily, and although the rest of the crew were highly suspicious of their former enemy, one by one they each succumbed, and as they journeyed together, they each managed to develop their own unique bond with Robin. And not only that, but Robin brought an incredible amount of experience to the crew, being by far the most mature member 
mother at the time, with a knowledge of the world that far surpassed a few kids and reindeer. She also provided the crew with a lot of extra firepower via her devil fruit, the Hana Hana no Mi. Over her lifetime, Robin had trained her abilities to a deadly degree, discovering and implementing the most efficient ways to subdue enemies, primarily through the spawning of extra arms. And so, Robin quickly became a highly valued crewmate. However, her past would soon catch up with her when the Straw Hats docked at the island of Water 7. Here, she was approached by a member of the modern incarnation of CP9 and blackmailed into leaving the crew, as well as participate in an assassination attempt of Iceberg, the mayor of Water 7. Of course, the Straw Hats found out and refused to accept her betrayal, deciding to pursue Robin all the way to the judicial island of any slobby. Here, Robin was scheduled to be executed for her fabricated crimes against the world government, a fate she willingly accepted in exchange for allowing her crewmates to live. However, after they appeared rather dramatically to save her, Robin finally broke down and yelled out one of the most iconic lines in the entire series. I want to live. Take me out to sea with you. And those words set into motion a series of events that would see the complete defeat of CP9, as well as the destruction of the entire island of any slobby. But most importantly, the return of Robin to the Straw Hat Pirates. Although this wouldn't last particularly long, as a mere two arcs later, the Straw Hats were separated by Bartholomew Kuma, and Robin found herself on the bridge nation of Tequila Wolf. Robin was put into temporary slavery before being rescued by the Revolutionary Army, with whom she would spend the next two years developing her knowledge and skills, and upon her reunion with the Straw Hats, Robin proved to be a true force to be reckoned with, having grown exponentially stronger and bringing with her a wealth of expertise in order to achieve her dream of uncovering the true history of the world. Some more fun facts about Robin. Despite her generally mature nature, Robin has a very active childlike imagination and she is often shown thinking of overly bizarre or cute things while maintaining a completely straight face. Following the events of Dress Rosa, Robin along with the rest of the crew received a bounty increase and she now sits at 130 million berries. When Achira Oda was asked if he could be any manga character, who would it be? Oda responded that he would be Nico Robin, so that he could sprout extra hands and draw manga 20 times faster. And finally, a truly useless fact, Robin has an attack named Cinco Fleur, which is a reference to the Spanish word for the number five. However, there is a very similar word in Japanese, Cinco, which means penis. Essentially meaning that Robin has an attack that sounds an awful lot like it's named Dick Fleur. And that pretty much does it for Robin. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way inclined to help support this independent channel, then also feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured on the next One Piece 101.